Our timeline of 20 Zelda games with Tears of the Kingdom begins with the three golden goddesses. In the era of creation, Din, the goddess of power, Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, and Faror, the goddess of courage, descended from the heavens down to what would become the surface and later Hyrule. Din created the Red Earth, Nehru gave it the spirit of law or time, and Faror brought life forms and spirits that would uphold the new world's law. With their labors complete, the golden goddesses departed back to the heavens, but left behind an ultimate omnipotent or neutral relic. The Triforce in the care of the goddess of light and the surface, Hylia, the leader of the gods' tribe on the surface. She protected the golden relic, but could not use it. Starting from her temple, the surface prospered with the first civilization which met its end with the invasion of the demon tribe. Originating from the underground, they were led by the full of hatred and malice unnamed in the original Japanese version translated by Quest with Eren as the bringer of demise. His aim was the Triforce and dominance of the surface. The humans were powerless against this malicious force fueled by the hatred and evil of one individual who turned the demon tribe into mindless minions of his cause. Facing genocide, the goddess gathered the last humans on a small piece of land, hid the Triforce within a section of it, and sent them all skyward. Behind them, she placed a cloud barrier to prevent the demon tribe from following them. Her grace gathered the remaining tribes and made a last stand in front of her temple. She triumphed, and the bringer of demise, the source of all hatred and evil, was imprisoned in the sealed grounds. Exhausted Hylia decided to address her eternal Triforce problem. The goddess met her end, and her surviving people established a new civilization on her sky island. Here, Hylia one day reincarnated as Zelda, the daughter of Gaepora, the headmaster of the Knight Academy of Skyloft. She shared a close bond to one of the students, Link. Upon his victory against Groose in the Loftwing race, he gained the sailcloth that the goddess once bestowed to her chosen hero. Even so, their love was rudely interrupted by the bringer of Demise's most loyal servant. Girahim, the new chief of the demon tribe in his master's absence. With it, Zelda was knocked off her loft wing and forced down to the surface. Meanwhile, Link faced his awakening as the creation of the goddess, Phi, called to him. First as he was falling and then leading him to her sword, Hylia's last gift for her future chosen hero and Phi's new master. Link pulled the goddess sword, gained his knight set, and departed for the service where Zelda had been aided by an old Shika, Impa. She directed the young girl towards Skyview Temple, which Link headed for only to duel Girahim. He survived and was tasked to enhance the blade in his right hand to its fullest potential. A quest that led back to Zelda, but as fate wanted in the time-traveling young Impa's own time. Right before blowing up the activated Gate of Time, she told Link to head back to the sealed temple. There in Grusa's presence, he attempted to open the remaining Gate of Time, but instead was forced to seal back the imprisoned. The sword was too weak, hence Link with the Harp of the Goddess had to go through the Silent Realms and three temples to enhance the blade with the flames of Faror, Nehru, and Din, which transformed the Goddess Sword into the Master Sword. Link traveled through the Gate of Time to the past, where Zelda blessed him and the Blade of Evil's Bane, unleashing its true form. Zelda, now aware of being the mortal incarnation of Hylia, went into slumber until Link claimed the Triforce in Sky Keep, bringing the relic and the statue of the goddess back to the surface to crush the imprisoned Bringer of Demise. Sadly, the reunion of the Trio of the Sky, Grus, Zelda, and Link, was ruined by Girahim. He kidnapped his target and traveled to the past to revive his now deceased master in the present. Link followed to confront the leader and tyrant of the demon tribe once again and defeated his strongest humanoid form. Though not fast enough to prevent the resurrection of the one who had one goal with his demon tribe and his restored Gurahim sword, dominate the surface with his tribe. A decisive confrontation was required where the hero, after a suspenseful battle, conquered the bringer of demise. In his last words, the dying ruler of the demon tribe cursed the mortal blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero 
to an everlasting line of repetition and incarnations of the hatred of the demon tribe. Keep in mind, we are following the original Japanese, so the Zelda teams and director Hidemaro Fujibayashi's wording here. Ganondorf eventually became the successor to the bringer of demise and kept going to tears, but far more on that soon. The bringer of demise and Phi were sealed in the Master Sword, which was laid to slumber in the sealed temple after a heartfelt goodbye, but not as depressing as old Impa's passing in the present. With the bringer of demise gone, the surface was once again repopulated and due to the mortal incarnation of Goddess Hylia in Zelda became known as Hyrule. But after a long peace, the land once again fell into chaos when mysterious interlopers attempted to seal away the Triforce by invading the Sacred Realm. As a result, Roru, the Sage of Light, constructed the Temple of Time over the ruins of the Sealed Temple and sealed both the Sacred Realm and the Triforce behind the Master Sword in the Temple of Light. Around the same time, Gustav established the Kingdom of Hyrule and became its first king by marrying the current Zelda, who from now on became known as the Princess. This marked the beginning of the Era of Prosperity, which lasted for ages until it met a sudden end with a second invasion of the evil forces. Luckily, the Picori descended from the sky with the Light Force and a sword to the Hero of Men who sealed the demons in the bound chest. The Picori, or Minish, remained the secret of the royal family, but reappeared a century later when one of their own, the wicked Vati, unleashed the demons from the bound chest in the search of the Light Force, turned the incumbent Zelda into stone, knocked out the new Link, and possessed the descendant of King Gustav, King Daltus, the King of Hyrule. Along with Vati's former Minish master, the cursed Ezlo, Link obtained the Four Elements, prepared the Sacred Four Sword, and faced Vati when he was extracting the Light Force from the princess's body. In a decisive three-stage battle, Link took down Vati's transfigured and reborn forms and finally his wrath, and it was presumed that the evil Minish had been killed. Breaking the curses cast on Princess Zelda, the King, and Ezlo. Using the Mage Cap, Zelda restored the kingdom to its original state. Vati was not killed, but sealed, and eventually broke out of his imprisonment. As the Wind Mage, he spread terror to Hyrule by kidnapping maidens, forcing an unknown hero to pull the Four Sword, which split his body into four and gave him the strength to defeat and seal the monstrosity in the sword. This seal remained under close watch until it one day broke when a new Princess Zelda and Link were investigating the sword. Vati kidnapped Zelda and brought her to his palace, causing Link to pull the legendary sword and split into four. He ultimately confronted the monstrous Wind Mage and sealed him back in the Four Sword, leading to ages of continuous peace. The Force Era continued and Hyrule prospered as Hyrule Castle Town was expanded Sadly, this state would be violently interrupted when a new terrible conflict engulfed Hyrule. It was during its closing phase when possible rebel Sheikah forces and Gerudo thieves, commanded by their young King Ganondorf, forced the mortally wounded mother of the future Hero of Time to the Lost Woods and Kokiri Forest. Bearing witness to the sight, the wise and old great Deku Tree took care of the child. He sensed that the infant's destiny was closely tied to that of Hyrule and raised him as a Kokiri. Leaving him completely unaware of his Hylian identity, there was a reason for this however as the time would arrive for the young Link to rescue Hyrule and its people. Shortly after this incident, the war was finally quelled by the King of Hyrule and likely his Goron and Zora allies, resulting in the unexplained disappearance of the Kakariko Shika the unification of the land under the Kingdom of Hyrule, and finally Ganondorf's forced fealty to the King of Hyrule. As it soon would turn out, Ganondorf would be the most serious representation of the demon tribes and the bringer of demise hatred. Humiliated by the Hylians, the King of the Gerudo began in secret to plot against the royal family, seeking the spiritual stones to claim what the bringer of demise couldn't, the omnipotent Triforce. On the fateful day his plan was set in motion, the cursed Deku Tree summoned the nine-year-old Link. Upon defeating Goma, inside him he bestowed the Kokiri Emerald. He told his hero to embark with Navi to Hyrule Castle Town to warn Princess Zelda about the looming threat. 
Link left the Kokiri Forest following his guardian's passing and with the parting gift from his childhood friend Saria, headed for Hyrule Castle. Just like Link, the princess had in a dream foreseen Ganondorf's plot to claim the Triforce and conquer the world. Nevertheless, her father, the King of Hyrule, did not believe the prophecy. As a result, she asked Link to act against Ganondorf on their own by obtaining the Goron Ruby and the Zora Sapphire. Guided by Impa, Link collected spiritual stones and helped out the Gorons and the Zora while also promising their princess something he didn't realize the consequences of. Despite his best efforts, he returned back to the gates of Castletown too late to prevent Ganondorf's attack on Hyrule Castle. In a panicked escape organized by Impa, Zelda tossed the Ocarina of Time to the young hero who ran off to the Temple of Time. Unaware of what was about to take place, Link opened the Door of Time and pulled the legendary Master Sword. Just to be sealed in it. Witnessing this, Ganondorf exploited the situation. He invaded the Sacred Realm, but could only claim the Triforce of Power as it split off from the remaining two pieces. He swiftly conquered Hyrule and burned down Castletown with many of its inhabitants. Seven years passed until the Hero of Time awoke in the Chamber of Sages and was greeted by the Light Sage, Raru, who granted him the Light Medallion and the Mysterious Sheik. Both tasked him to break the curse cast by Ganondorf on the Five Temples and awaken the Sages within them. Along with his trusty mare, Epona, and guided by Navi and Sheik, Link crossed the land of Hyrule. He then solved the puzzles, defeated the darkness within him, and destroyed the monsters of the temples, and awoke the potentially deceased but still determined five sages. His childhood friend Saria, Darunia, Ruto, where Link really dodged an arrow, Impa of the Sheikah, and the poor Naburu of the Gerudo tribe, and returned back to the Temple of Time. There, Sheik revealed her true identity as the seventh sage and keeper of the Triforce of Wisdom, Princess Zelda. She granted the Hero of Time the Light Arrows. Unfortunately, Ganondorf had Link under complete surveillance and sealed the princess the moment after she dropped her disguise, bringing her to his castle. With the assistance of the six remaining sages, Link conquered the trials set by Ganondorf and steadily fought his way towards the top of the castle where the self-proclaimed King of Evil and the imprisoned Zelda awaited his arrival. The massive door opened and accompanied by the sound of organs, the Triforce of Power, Wisdom, and Courage resonated. These toys are too much for you. I command you to return them to me. The decisive battle against the King of Evil for the Triforce and the future of Hyrule commenced. The Hero of Time confronted and crushed Ganondorf, but as it seemed that it was all over, the King of Thieves tried to crush the castle on the princess and the hero. When this failed, he utilized the Triforce of Power to transform into Ganon. the true successor of the Bringer of Demise. For a short moment, the Hero of Time was forced to rely on his remaining items and the Biggeron Sword. He found a way through and brought Ganon down to his knees, reclaiming the Master Sword. The Seven Sages, led by Princess Zelda, sealed Ganondorf with the Triforce of Power still within him in the Sacred Realm. He in return, much like the unnamed Bringer of Demise, cursed them and swore to murder their descendants. The Hero of Time was sent back seven years, along with the Triforce of Courage, to warn Princess Zelda about Ganondorf's planned coup. This would cause the split of the Triforce and time and space itself, creating two coexisting parallel Hyrules. Navi, the fairy companion, left, and the hero warned the princess but after a short while came to the conclusion that the only way to prevent Ganondorf from entering the Sacred Realm would be to entrust the Ocarina of Time to Link and send him on Epona away after teaching him the Song of Time. 
the hero embarked from Hyrule, but was shortly after knocked out and robbed by the Skull Kid who had stolen the powerful and evil Majora's Mask from the Happy Mask salesman in the Lost Woods. After a brief chase, Link finally fell down a tree trunk, was cursed by the Skull Kid, and ended up in the parallel world of Termina. The hero found himself in Clock Town three days prior to the Carnival of Time and quickly learned that the moon was falling. The Skull Kid and Majora were behind it, and the fact that the masks of Termina possess spiritual powers. Not wasting any time, the hero recaptured his ocarina and played the Song of Time to set the time back to the moment of his arrival to Termina. He learned from the Happy Mask salesman that an ancient tribe had in the past used the accursed mask for hexing rituals and that the Skull Kid had been possessed by it. The only way to prevent the apocalypse was to destroy the four masked monsters lurking in the temples of Woodfall, Snowhead, Great Bay, and the Stone Tower and awaken the four guardian deities of the land. Using the ocarina's properties, Link conquered the struggles and time itself, but did as well realize that the land and races of Termina were in a miserable state and plagued by deep and tribal tragedies. Unlike the Kingdom of Hyrule, the people of Termina embraced the four giants as their gods in a similar way to how the Zoras of Hyrule had their guardian deity, Jabu Jabu. These four giants used to live in peace with the inhabitants in a unified Termina. However, as a result of Termina's split into four regions, each of the four giants left Clock Town and took 100 steps towards the new regions. If it hadn't been for the Hero of Time, the deities would never have been released from the monsters placed by Majora. The people of Termina saw themselves as too enlightened to be governed by gods. Instead, they took advantage and pride of other powers such as the magical masks. Without them, and then in particular, the Deku, Zora, and Goron transformation masks, a hero of time would never have passed through the trials of the land. In the end, the Hero of Time was a just and noble soul who helped people, lost souls, and races in need, and for this he was rewarded by Majora with the Fierce Deity's Mask, a mask told to contain the combined memories and souls of Termina's inhabitants. With this mask, Link couldn't possibly lose against the demon. The Hero of Time confronted Majora in the final hours and destroyed it, its incarnation, and finally wrath saving Termina from the apocalypse and freed the innocent and naive Skull Kid. The spirit inside the mask was gone as the Happy Mask salesman thanked Link for his assistance. With his mission completed, Link and Epona returned to the Lost Woods and continued his search for Navi. After some additional journeys, the Hero of Time eventually returned to Hyrule, but what happened to the kingdom while he was absent? One answer to this question can be traced to the ancient sages at Arbiter's Grounds who states that Ganondorf invaded Hyrule. The ruins of the Temple of Time were most likely the subsequent result of Ganondorf's occupation and destruction of Castletown during his invasion. The tide of war eventually turned and ended it with the expulsion of the Gerudo tribe and the botched execution of Ganondorf after the Triforce of Power resonated within him. Instead, the Gerudo thief was banished to the Twilight Realm. The Hero of Time returned to a ruined Hyrule, but as his heroic deeds in both the Adult Era and Termina had to be kept a secret from the public, he was not remembered as a hero or cherished as one by the inhabitants of Hyrule. Instead, he must have decided to prove his worth by following in his family's footsteps and became a respected knight. Obvious traces suggesting this are the golden armor, sword, shield, and helmet the hero's shade wore in the era of twilight. Nevertheless, despite serving as a knight, the hero of time still lamented that he wasn't remembered as a hero and saw it as his mission to secure his legacy through his eventual bloodline descendant. As we all know, the hero of time would eventually return as the hero's shade a form that might be a consequence of what could only have been a violent death in battle due to his damaged night armor and missing eye in the Twilight Era. With Ganondorf's malice stuck in the Twilight Realm, 
Hyrule experienced another era of peace which lasted until the Shadow Invasion. Back then, the descendant of the dreadful interlopers, the twisted and rejected Twilight Zant, aided by Ganondorf's malice, overthrew and cursed Midna, the Princess of Twilight, and took the throne by force. Filled with hatred, the self-proclaimed king launched a massive invasion on Hyrule and put an end to the long peace. The soldiers of Hyrule fought courageously against the Shadow Demons, but the prolonged peace and dissolution of the Knight's Order had left the armed forces of Hyrule weakened. There was little they could do until Xant made his entry into the throne room of Hyrule Castle with an ultimatum. Surrender or die, life or death. The Twilight Demons forced Princess Zelda of Hyrule to submission and accept Hyrule to be covered in twilight. It was at that time that Link from Ordona was knocked out, entered the twilight, and upon being transformed into a wolf, was thrown into the castle dungeon. There he partnered up with the cursed Midna, who brought him to Princess Zelda. Upon this encounter, Link set out to restore light to the provinces of Faron, Elden, and finally Lineru, and aid Midna in reassembling the fused shadow. It seemed as everything went according to plan when Link and Midna were attacked and knocked out by Xan. Midna was mortally injured, and the hero once again in wolf form hurried to Hyrule Castle. There, Zelda sacrificed herself to the Twilight Princess and told the hero to draw the Master Sword from its pedestal. With this action, the curse cast on him was dispelled. Together with Midna and with the hidden skills of the hero's shade, he would then reassemble the Mirror of Twilight and reopen the gateways to the past, a stronghold, an ancient civilization in the sky, and finally the Palace of Twilight where the hero defeated Xant. However, in the moment of death, Xant revealed that Ganondorf had been fully resurrected and returned to Hyrule Castle forcing the Hero of Twilight to a decisive confrontation against the King of Thieves who, for a short while, took possession of Zelda's body. The Hero did not hesitate to knock Ganondorf out of the body and then take down Beast Ganon. At this point, Ganondorf returned to his malice form and Midna utilized the Fused Shadow to destroy Ganondorf once and for all. She failed but with the Light Arrows, the Demon King was forced to a last duel against the Hero of Twilight, leading to his demise after the Triforce of Power disappeared from his hand. Shortly after, the Mirror of Twilight was shattered by Midna, thus closing the only gateway between Hyrule and the Twilight Realm. Several hundreds of years after Ganondorf's demise, relations between the Gerudo and Hylians normalized and the Gerudo tribe was given permission to return back to the kingdom. Unfortunately, one day the reincarnation of the King of Darkness, a new Ganondorf was born into the tribe. After stealing the trident from the Forbidden Pyramid and the Dark Mirror from the Temple of Darkness, he sought to resurrect Vati by creating a Shadow Link to stir chaos. He then went on to seal the Six Maidens and Princess Zelda within crystals. The Shadow Link tricked the new hero to pull the Sacred Four Sword, causing him to split into four and free Vati from his imprisonment. The hero was tasked to rescue the Maidens, open a path to the Realm of Heavens where Vati was finally utterly destroyed and with Zelda's help confronted and sealed the new Ganon in the Four Sword. Following this act, the blade was returned to its rightful pedestal at the Four Sword Sanctuary. Peace returned to Hyrule in the adult timeline as a new era of prosperity arose. Slowly, the hero's merits faded into legend when Ganon, after several centuries, managed to break the seal set by the Seven Sages. He once again brought havoc on Hyrule. Ganon and his minions crushed the Hyrulean army, and out of options, the Hylians pleaded the gods for help. 
faced by the hopeless situation and the missing hero of time. King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule entrusted the fate of his kingdom to the gods. They decided to flood and seal the land at the bottom of a great sea and selected who would be allowed to ascend to the new land. Upon Princess Zelda's and her retainer's departure, the king broke the Triforce of Wisdom in two and handed one of the pieces to her. Hundreds of years after Hyrule had been sealed at the bottom of the Great Sea, the memory of the ancient kingdom vanished and Ganondorf found a way up to the surface of the sea and the Forsaken Fortress. From here, the demon thief sent out his minions to kill the Sage of Earth, Laruto, and the Sage of Wind, Fado, to weaken the Master Sword and ordered the Helmarok King to kidnap young girls in the search of the descendant of Princess Zelda and the Triforce of Wisdom. This treacherous crime led the pirates of the Great Sea to Outset Island, where they knocked their kidnapped captain, Tetra, out of the Helmarok King's clutches. Instead, Errol, the sister of a new Link, was kidnapped. He set out to rescue her and infiltrated the Forsaken Fortress who was thrown into the sea and rescued by the King of Red Lions. Link set out to Dragon Roost, received the Wind Waker, freed the Dragon Valu from Goma's clutches, and received the Pearl of Din. The hero set out for the Forest Haven and obtained the Pearl of Faror from the Great Deku Tree and the Pearl of Nehru from the descendant of Lord Jabu Jabu, Jaboon, and raised the Tower of the Gods. Link was set on a great trial and subsequently granted passage by the goddesses to the sealed Hyrule Castle to pull the Master Sword. With a blade of evil's bane in his hand, he faced Ganondorf at the Forsaken Fortress, who was unable to inflict any wounds as the Master Sword had lost its capability to destroy evil. Ganondorf attempted to slice down Link, but was interrupted by Tetra and grabbed her. In that moment, the crest of the Triforce of Power appeared and the King of Thieves realized that he had found Princess Zelda. The King of Red Lions summoned Link and Tetra to Hyrule Castle and revealed himself as King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule. He united the two fragments of the Triforce of Wisdom to awaken Tetra as Princess Zelda and tasked Link to awaken the Sages of Earth and Wind and bring them respectively to the Earth and Wind Temple. Offering their prayers, Medley, the Sage of Earth, and Makar, the Sage of Wind, restored the power to repel evil to the Master Sword. Link crossed the vast reaches of the Great Sea and gathered the eight Triforce Shards to reassemble the Triforce of Courage. The gods recognized his valor, the Crest of Courage appeared on his left hand, and the King of Hyrule dubbed Link the Hero of Winds. Link returned to Hyrule Castle just to realize that Princess Zelda had been kidnapped by Ganondorf forcing them to a final confrontation at the top of Ganon's tower. The circle was complete. Once again, the hero and the Demon King stood face to face, but this time Ganondorf did not wait for Link to strike first and took the Triforce of Wisdom and Courage by force and brought the complete Triforce down. Ganondorf stretched his hand to wish for Hyrule's resurrection, but could do little when King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule laid his hand first and wished for the destruction of the troubled land. Wash away this ancient land of Hyrule. Let a ray of hope shine on the future of the world. The last battle of Hyrule was about to take place as the infuriated Ganondorf tried to murder Link and Princess Zelda in a desperate final confrontation. He failed and Link pierced the Master Sword through his skull, turning the Demon King into stone. Hyrule was destroyed, and King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule decided to go down with his kingdom. Saying their goodbyes, Link, Tetra, and the pirate crew sailed out to search for a new land at the end of the Great Sea. Several months after their departure from Outset Island, Link, Tetra, and the pirates crossed the waters protected by the Ocean King and came across the mythical ghost ship. Intrigued by it, Tetra boarded the ship just to be kidnapped, while Link was washed off to Merkay Island and rescued by the elder Oceus. He introduced the Hero of Winds to Sela the Fairy, and together they convinced the greedy Captain Linebeck to search for the ghost ship's location 
with the help of the Phantom Hourglass and the Temple of the Ocean King, and rescue the spirits of power, wisdom, and courage. With the combined power of the spirits, Link forced his way onto the ghost ship and found out that Tetra had been turned into stone after the evil spirit Bellum had drained her life force. Realizing that only Link could save the sea, Oceus revealed his true identity to be that of the Ocean King and asked him to destroy Bellum with the forged phantom sword. The Hero of the Winds headed to the depths of the Temple of the Ocean King and confronted Bellum, crushing the evil spirit and restored Tetra to normal. Nonetheless, Bellum was not done, and after a lengthy chase, Link faced the demon, but stood no chance when the great evil being unleashed its true power. Luckily, out of nowhere, Captain Linebeck gathered the courage to face the evil spirit. Bellum possessed the captain, but by doing so, Link and Tetra were finally free to finish off the evil spirit and seal it in the Phantom Sword. With it, the Ocean King finally presented his true form as a whale and sent the three back to the Great Sea and the pirate ship. Witnessing the departing SS Lineback on the horizon, Link, Tetra, and the pirates continued their search for a new land to settle. After lengthy continuous searches, Link, Tetra, and the pirates finally found a new continent which was deemed New Hyrule. The monarchy was restored and the descendants of Tetra were again named Zelda. Things returned to normal, apart from the spirit tracks stretching across the continent. Over the next generations, an extensive railroad network was developed and a new castle erected. But little did they know that the Tower of Spirits and the Spirit Tracks had a radically different function as a lock and shackle on the Demon King Maladus, who had been sealed upon defeat by the gods in the ancient past. A century passed after the founding of the New Kingdom when the tracks began to vanish. As a result, Link, an engineer, was disguised by the great-great-granddaughter of Tetra, Princess Zelda, and along with Alfonso, headed for the Tower of Spirits to investigate. At the site, the three were confronted by the evil Chancellor Cole and a member of the ancient Locomo tribe, Burn. Together, they intended to utilize Zelda's body as a vessel for the Demon King Maladus. Zelda's spirit was separated from her body, and along with Link, the two were ordered to the Tower of Spirits by the Locomo Sage Angeen. Zelda's spirit entered the armor of a phantom. Traveling with the spirit train, Link and Phantom Zelda crossed the land of New Hyrule, restored the barriers to the temples of the land by borrowing the powers of the Locomo Sages through the spirit flute. Link and Zelda returned to the Tower of Spirits and realized that Maladus had been successfully resurrected, leading to a suspenseful battle for Zelda's body in the Dark Realm. The demon train was eventually derailed and Maladus's spirit thrown out of Zelda's body. The princess wasted no time and regained her mortal form. Out of options, the Demon King possessed Chancellor Cole and transformed into a menacing beast. The decisive battle for new Hyrule commenced, and with the combined power of Zelda, the Sages threw the Spirit Flute and the Locomo Sword, the Demon King was destroyed by Link. Peace returned to the ruined new Hyrule, the Locomo returned to the heavens, and the kingdom once again flourished. In one outcome, the hero of time took on Ganondorf, but failed to strike him down and was destroyed in the confrontation. The triumphant Ganondorf extracted the Triforce of Wisdom from Princess Zelda, the Triforce of Courage from the corpse of the hero, and transformed into the Demon King Mandrag Ganon. Faced by this horrific sight, the Seven Sages, led by the adult Princess Zelda, as a last resort sealed the Demon King with a complete Triforce in the Sacred Realm. The Master Sword was laid to rest in the Temple of Time, waiting for a new hero to pull it in Hyrule's Hour of Need. Peace returned to Hyrule, but Ganondorf's takeover had exposed the location of the Triforce and greedy individuals found their way into the corrupted realm 
where they were transformed into monsters and included in Ganon's growing army. The sacred realm grew more and more unstable until the incumbent king of Hyrule ordered seven sages to seal the sacred realm with the Triforce and sent his knights to guard them. In the moment when the sages were about to seal off the sacred realm, demons poured out marking the outbreak of the imprisoning war. A fierce battle ensued where the knights took the full brunt of Ganon's minions and fought courageously till the seal was secured. Hyrule lay in ruins, the majority of the knights were dead, most of the races including the Gorons and Zoras left and the bloodline of the Hylians began to wane. Despite decline, the land remained at peace until a sudden disaster struck Hyrule. It was at that time when Aghanim the wizard appeared and quelled the tumultuous. Gaining the soldiers' trust, the wizard tricked and murdered him, cast a spell on the soldiers, and began to kidnap and send the descendants of the Seven Sages to the Dark World in an attempt to break the seal set on his master Ganon. The imprisoned Princess Zelda sent out a telepathic plea out to Link and his uncle, the two last survivors of the Knight's Order. Without any further thoughts, Link's uncle grabbed his sword and headed towards Hyrule Castle, but was outnumbered and mortally wounded by the possessed soldiers. In his final breath, he entrusted his sword to Link, who rescued the princess and located the sage, Sahasrala, who tasked him to find the pendants of courage, power, and wisdom, and pull the master sword. Link acquired the pendants, pulled the master sword stored in the decayed Temple of Time in the Lost Woods, and took on Aghanim in Hyrule Castle after he sent Princess Zelda to the Dark World. Link was victorious, but Aghanim dragged him into the Dark World. The hero found himself in a twisted underworld and wasted no time freeing the maidens from the temples of the underworld and rescued Princess Zelda who broke the barrier surrounding Ganon's tower. The hero of legend challenged and defeated Aghanim and faced Ganon in a decisive confrontation. He suppressed the dark magic attacks of the Demon King and finally struck him down with the Master Sword, putting an end to his tyranny over the Dark World. The hero laid his hand on the reclaimed Triforce and wished for the restoration of peace and the fallen to the world, bringing the murdered king and his uncle back to life. The Master Sword was left to rest again and the Triforce was secured in the care of the royal family as the Dark World slowly faded away. After defeating Ganon, peace once again settled in Hyrule, but Link, the hero of legend, quickly grew restless of the tranquility and set sail to foreign lands to increase his combat skills and find enlightenment. Unfortunately, on his way back to Hyrule, his sailboat ended up in a massive storm and the mast of it was hit by lightning. Unconscious, Link was washed ashore the island of Koholint, rescued and brought to Mabe village by a girl named Marin. Upon waking up, Terran, Marin's father, handed Link his missing shield before the hero of legend returned back to the shore to reclaim his sword. From here, Link traversed the mysterious woods, conquered the tail cave, collected the first instrument of sirens, and learn from a mysterious owl that he would need all eight instruments of sirens to awaken the sleeping wind fish. On his quest to collect these, he befriended a number of odd animal friends and also brought Marin along to play and sing the ballad of the wind fish to awaken a walrus who was blocking the path. Here, Marin also shared to Link her dream of becoming a seagull to share her songs across the world. Moved, the hero eventually arrived at Southern Face Shrine, where he discovered the inconvenient truth about Koholint Island. To the finder, the Isle of Koholint is but an illusion. Human, monster, sea, sky, a scene on the lid of a sleeper's eye. Awake the dreamer, and Koholint will vanish much like a bubble on a needle. Cast away, you should know the truth. The hero of legend was set under a horrible dilemma as Koholint was nothing but a dream of the windfish and awakening him would cause the island to vanish. The hero collected the remaining sirens, 
and was then forced by the owl, who turned out to be the windfish's spirit, to make an impossible decision. Awakening the windfish at Tall Tall Heights from his nightmares and erase any traces of the dream world. Link had no choice. He one final time played the ballad of the windfish to awaken both the windfish and himself. Luckily, it seems that Marin might have had her wish of becoming a seagull fulfilled. Link, the great hero of Hyrule, but destroyer of Koholent Island, was filled with anger and regret, but could do little but once again embark back for his homeland. Sometime after, the twin witches Twin Rova plotted to resurrect Ganon by enlightening the flame of destruction stolen by Onox and the flame of despair stolen by Varen and offer a sacrifice. Guided by the Triforce in Hyrule Castle, Link, the hero of legend, was teleported to the lands of Holodrum and later Labrina. Wielding the Rod of Seasons, Link connected the essences of nature, located Din, the Oracle of Seasons, and defeated Onox. He was then sent to Labrina to locate Nehru, the Oracle of Sages, and Feror, the Oracle of Secrets. Using the Harp of Ages to travel back and forth in time, Link collected the essences of time and defeated the evil sorceress of shadows, Varen, who had possessed Nehru in the present and Queen Ambi in the distant past. Nevertheless, Twin Rova succeeded in lighting the flames and kidnapping Princess Zelda, who were prevented from sacrificing her forcing the witches to sacrifice themselves. Since the ceremony was butchered, Ganon returned as a brainless beast and was taken down by the hero of this era. It would take time until a new Link would rise to claim the Master Sword in the land of Hyrule, which experienced another era of peace until Yuga, the sorcerer, who similarly to Aghanim kidnapped the descendants of the Seven Sages, interrupted it. However, unlike the wizard, he trapped them inside paintings. Just like the hero of legend, he was tasked to find the remaining pendants after receiving the Pendant of Courage from Princess Zelda. An unknown merchant, Ravio, moved his business into Link's house, and thanks to his magical bracelet, Link was not stuck when Yuga attempted to turn him into a painting, but realized that the bracelet gave him the ability to merge into walls. After obtaining the three pendants of virtue, the hero pulled the Master Sword from the decayed Temple of Time, destroyed the barrier surrounding Hyrule Castle, and beat Yuga, who escaped with the painting of Princess Zelda through a crack in the wall. Link merged into the crack and found himself in the decayed Low Rule, a dimension opposite to Hyrule. Using the seven paintings of the Sages and the Triforce of Power, Yuga revived Ganon, but was in the last moment stopped by Princess Hilda of Low Rule. The hero set out to free the trapped sages, was gifted the Triforce of Courage, and battled Yuga in a decisive confrontation in Low Rule Castle, just to be betrayed and found out that everything had been staged by Princess Hilda in order to salvage her crumbling kingdom after her predecessors had in the past destroyed the Triforce of Low Rule to avoid conflicts. Princess Hilda extracted the Triforce of Wisdom from Princess Zelda and demanded Link to hand over the Triforce of Courage. When he refused, she sent out Yuga Ganon to destroy him, but was after a short skirmish betrayed by Yuga, who took the Triforce of Wisdom from her. Only Link and the Triforce of Courage stood in the way from Ganon's return and takeover, but in that very moment, Princess Zelda granted Link the Bow of Light. After a long battle between walls, he finally managed to destroy Ganon and Yuga and obtain the complete Triforce after Ravio revealed himself to be the Lorulian counterpart of Link. Lorul was reaching its end, but instead of wishing for the salvage of Hyrule in the Sacred Realm, Link and Zelda wished for Lorul's Triforce to be restored, and as a result, saving the grateful Princess Hilda and her kingdom from certain doom. Sometime after restoring peace to Hyrule and Lowrule, the new hero of legend embarked in disguise to the kingdom of Hytopia. There he was recognized and asked to rescue Princess Styla from the ugly jumpsuit curse cast by Lady Maud. 
he was sent on this adventure along with two other heroes to confront the vicious lady and free Styla from her curse. The complete Triforce passed down the royal family, securing order and prosperity to the land. This state of matters continued until one of the aging kings saw mistrust in his son. As a result, he split the Triforce and hid away the Triforce of Courage, casting a spell over it. When the king eventually passed away, his son only inherited the Triforce of Power, which led him to interrogate his sister, Princess Zelda, but as she refused to confess either about the Triforce of Wisdom or the Triforce of Courage, the confident wizard and secret follower of Ganon cast a sleeping spell on the princess. Full of grief, the young king placed his sleeping sister on an altar in the North Castle, and as the Triforce was split, Hyrule began to crumble, losing more and more of its territory until it was nothing but a shadow of its former self. Hyrule was deserted, but this did not prevent Ganon's followers from resurrecting the bereft of intelligence Demon King, who invaded the land and stole the Triforce of Power. The reigning Princess Zelda feared the worst and split the Triforce of Wisdom into eight pieces and hid them across the temples of the land and then ordered her nursemaid Impa to find a new hero. Angered by the princess's actions, Ganon captured her and sent his minions after Impa. It is dangerous to go alone. Take this. Luckily, in the moment Impa was surrounded by the Demon King's underlings, Link appeared and saved her and went on to collect the eight shards of the Triforce of Wisdom hidden in the dungeons of Lesser Hyrule. With the reassembled Triforce of Wisdom, Link penetrated Ganon's stronghold, defeated the Demon King with the Silver Arrow, and rescued Princess Zelda, restoring peace to Hyrule with the Triforce of Power and Wisdom back in its rightful hands. Following the final destruction of Ganon, Link helped in the reconstruction efforts. Six years passed, and the crest of the Triforce of Courage appeared on his hand was instructed by the aging Impa to locate the Triforce of Courage after telling him about the sleeping princess. But he would need to be careful as Ganon's minions seek Link's blood to resurrect their fallen master. Impa entrusted the hero with six crystals and a scroll with the location of the Triforce of Courage, sending him out on one of his toughest adventures yet for the six palaces and the statues located in these. Link conquered these challenges in the Guardian of the Great Temple, the final trial prepared by the King, and obtained the Triforce of Courage. Using the combined power of the restored, complete Triforce, he awoke Princess Zelda and brought peace to Hyrule. As for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, we have three options. Spoilers incoming. The most likely follows the official timeline update from the Zelda team in 2017. This one confirmed that Breath of the Wild takes place long after all the other games. The other two options are a new timeline deriving directly from Skyward Sword and a complete story reboot of the franchise. For the sake of continuity, we will stick to the Convergence Theory, a combination of the unified, downfall, child and adult timelines. Long after Zelda 2, Four Swords Adventures and Spirit Tracks, an unprecedented event transpired. With it, the past got blurred as Rito coexisted with Zora. The Gorons lived underground in their capital Gorondia, and the Kingdom of Hyrule was simply forgotten. Fortunately, the memory of Goddess Hylia survived, so did key figures of some of the tribes. Nevertheless, the cursed memory and legacy of Ganondorf and Ganon did not. The land itself reverted back to being the surface as it was in the era of Goddess Hylia. Onto this blank slate, the humanoid Zonai descended from the heavens with seven secret stones they were soon regarded as descendants of gods. The noble dragon tribe wielded powerful sorcery and used it to build and share technological wonders and weaponry. This way, the Rito and Zora could ascend to build floating structures high up in the sky. The Gerudo, on the other hand, preferred to stick to the ground and the Gorons in the depths 
but both took advantage of Zonai items. From the same depths, the Zonai extracted Zonite in numerous mines, forging them into charges for their technology. In this society, Hylians were below the dragons, but deeply involved in the Temple of Time on the Great Plateau. After all, both respected the original protector of the surface, Goddess Hylia. The Zonai commanded the surface for countless generations, but eventually, as is common in high-tech societies, their birth rate plummeted. To the point of imminent extinction, among them was the last couple that would have pure-blooded offspring. Their firstborn was a daughter, Minoru. She was followed by a son, Raru. Both were raised traditionally and granted two of the seven secret stones. Minoru turned her into the spirit stone, while Raru, the light stone. This didn't come as a surprise, as Minoru began her research into Zonai technology and development of ranger constructs from an early age. Raru, on the other hand, was an enlightened and born leader who was concerned with securing the peace after the dominant dragon tribe was gone. He sought to counsel in the Temple of Time, where he met the young, beautiful, and fearless Sonia, a Hylian priestess in whom Raru saw an opportunity for the fertile Hylians to be the successors of the Zonai. The two made their vows by holding hands and married. Sonia became the master of the Time Stone and the queen of Hyrule's first king. Together they set out to build shrines of light to keep their kingdom safe from monsters. All tribes accepted the new authority, apart from the Gerudo king, Ganondorf. It was to this reality that Princess Zelda from the fallen kingdom of the distant future found herself in. She had time traveled to the past with Raru Stone, which she had turned into a combined time and light stone. Realizing the magnitude of this event and sensing their bloodline connection, King Raru and Queen Sonya disguised Princess Zelda as a distant relative. In return, Zelda shared details about the future and her hero, Link. Ganondorf launched his invasion, but was halted by the royal wielders of the Three Stones and their combined power of light and time. Though he took note and swore fealty to the Kingdom of Hyrule to get close to this source of power, King Raru welcomed Ganondorf's fealty, but underestimated his determination, specifically in assassinating his queen. Halted by Zelda, the Gerudo King took matters into his own fist and stole Sonya's stone and turned into something terrifying. The King of Hyrule was too late as he confronted the Gerudo turned Demon King. He had no other option but to retreat as the Blood Moon summoned the Demon Army. Raru buried Sonya in what would become the Forgotten Temple. There, the first king of Hyrule assembled Minoru, Zelda, the new leader of the Gerudo, and the leaders of the Goron, Rito, and Zora tribes. He dubbed them all sages and granted them the remaining secret stones to bring into battle. One king, one princess, and five sages against one demon king but it was for naught and forced a desperate distraction. A sacrifice and imprisoning act where Raru took hold of the Demon King's heart and sealed his gloom magic. Before freezing in place, the first King of Hyrule made one final mistake. He told Ganondorf about Link of the distant future. The Zonai were at their end as Minoru was mortally wounded. It was then that the decayed Master Sword suddenly time traveled from Link and Princess Zelda hatched a plan. Knowing that her hero was alive and on his quest, she approached the Sages of Wind, Fire, 
water and lightning with a request. Reach out to their successors in the future. She then confronted the last Zonai to stand by Link's side and something else. The forbidden act of dragonification. A sacrifice to which Minru wanted to prevent, but eventually approved as she saw no other option for Zelda to deliver the Master's Sword to Link. Furthermore, she moved her spirit to Zelda's Purapad so that she could be by Link's side. Zelda swallowed her stone and turned into the immortal Dragon of Light. It immediately shed dragon tears throughout Hyrule before disappearing into the clouds. This caused tiny depressions which the ancient Hylians etched geoglyphs around. The Temple of Time and parts of the Great Plateau, plus a number of smaller, though key structures of the surface and many of the Shrines of Light, were sent skyward by the four remaining sages and hidden behind the dragon barrier, all to keep Great Sky Island and the Purapad with Minru's spirit safe from the Demon King and his followers. Both waited for the day of Link's arrival. Down in the north central depths, Ra'ru held Ganondorf imprisoned, waiting for the day Link would turn up with the glowing Master Sword to finish what he started. The next kings of Hyrule erected the second castle of the kingdom above the ceiling point. Later though, the same dynasty distanced themselves from the extinct Zonai and their technology until the ancient Sheikah took inspiration from the dragon tribe. Realizing that Ganondorf was only sealed but could still accumulate malice rather than gloom. They acted, constructing inferior technology, weaponry, and shrines, complete with monks in case the kingdom would fall to Ganon's calamity. The ancient Sheikah convinced the kings of Hyrule to heed their warning, financed the development of technology, and when the time arrived, appoint four champions to their divine beasts, plus a champion who would wield the Master Sword and help Princess Zelda to halt the threat in central Hyrule. They succeeded, though it remains unknown who the swordsman was. What isn't a mystery is what the King of Hyrule did to the ancient Sheikah, persecuted them, and caused a split into two an agricultural faction in Kakariko, and a militaristic and vengeful Yiga clan in Gerudo. The latter swore fealty to the calamity. The Sheikah technology was destroyed or hidden under Hyrule's surface and would not see the light of day until the signs of Calamity Ganon returned 10,000 years later. Upon losing his queen, only six years into his daughter Zelda's life, King Rome heeded the prophecy of a fortune teller. He ordered the excavation of Sheikah artifacts and the appointment of new champions after a new Link had pulled the Master Sword at the age of twelve. There were only two issues, the Yiga clan and Zelda, who couldn't unlock her power of light. After Link saved the princess from the former, she began to grow feelings for the chosen knight, but when Calamity Ganon rose its ugly head, all was lost. Learning from his prior mistakes, Ganondorf used the Calamity to corrupt the inferior Sheikah machinery and launched his war against the Hylians. He unleashed blights towards the Divine Beasts and Beam Guardians to torch Hyrule Castle, Town, Central Hyrule, and finally Akala Citadel. Despite the death of Daruk, Mipha, Rivali, and Urbosa, and most of all her father, Zelda couldn't activate her power. That is, until Link's own life was on the line near Fort Hateno. Too little too late, 
As Link was hurried to the Shrine of Resurrection, Zelda faced her failure by entrusting the Master Sword to the Great Deku Tree and holding a grip on Calamity Ganon for the next 100 years. The time it took Link to heal and realize that the kingdom and 90% of its inhabitants perished on Zelda's 17th birthday. Aided by the voice of Zelda and the spirit of King Rome, Link set out to reclaim his lost memories, liberate the divine beasts and the spirits trapped within them. Guided by Sidon, Riju, Teba, and Yunobo, he succeeded against the Blights and witnessed Master Kogas of the Yiga Clan fall into the depths. With the powers of the Champions and the Shrines of Trials, Link pulled the Master Sword for a second time in Karak Forest. With it, he headed to Impa to return to the site of the final memory, the battlefield where he fell. A fact that was also recited by the humble Rito bard, Cass. Though it is less certain whether Link upgraded the blade, went through the champion's ballad, or faced Monk Maz Kosha. Zelda dropped the calamity in Hyrule's castle's sanctum for Link to finish in the observatory below. A task which became a formality after the champions knocked out half of the mechanical monstrosity's health. Only Dark Beast Ganon stood in their way, but with the bow of light from Zelda, it was over. The princess broke free and crushed Ganondorf's most successful puppet and beast yet, but unknown to her at this stage, the Demon King remained. An interbellum of around eight years followed, in which Zelda set out to restore and improve what was left of the kingdom. She moved into Link's house and founded a school in Hitano Village. It is also noted that she visited Tarrytown, the tribes and families of the fallen champions, and rested, plus shared ideas on how to develop Lorellan Village into a resort. These years saw positive changes, and even the construction of another settlement, Lookout Landing, which Pura was in charge of. Here they studied the Zonai. Just for everything to fall apart with the emergence of gloom. A new threat and plague that brought Link and Zelda back to the Great Deku Tree to pull the regenerated Master Sword and head into the depths of Hyrule Castle. The imprisoning chamber where Raru awaited the Chosen's arrival, but first Princess Zelda geeked out over the Zonai structures and murals, unaware that her future fate was depicted on the covered section of them, all leading back to the source of everything, the Demon King. Raru dropped his hand and dropped Zelda his secret stone, leaving Link to confront Ganondorf. It didn't go well. Link's arm was burnt off and health and stamina drained back to his starting point in the Shrine of Resurrection. The Master Sword was crushed and Link missed Zelda by a few inches as she fell and time traveled with her acquired stone to the distant past. The hero would have fallen to his death if Raru's last mortal remains didn't grab him. Meanwhile, across Hyrule, the upheaval began. Hyrule Castle rose up. Rocks and pieces of land fell down from the sky, crushing parts of Kakariko and alterations such as caves and chasms to the depths opened. The Blood Moon of the Demon King resurrected his army and even conquered Lorellan village, which was burned and occupied. Link woke up on Great Sky Island with Raru's arm, where he, upon gaining the Purapad and the power to ascend, fuse, ultra hand, and recall at the Temple of Time, heeded the call from Phi. The Master Sword was sent to Zelda in the distant past. 
The same Zelda who as the Light Dragon opened the path to the surface and lookout landing. Here, Link learned that someone who looked like the princess had been sighted acting strangely or directly hostile. Plus that, the Rito, Zora, Gorons, and Gerudo were once again plagued. Pura granted Link the paraglider to launch from the Skyview Towers and map Hyrule. Then, to help out Hyrule's allies and along the way, follow Impa to investigate the mysterious geoglyphs that had also surfaced. Dragon tears and geoglyphs surround them, which revealed Zelda's memories from the distant past. These had been detailed by the ancient Hylians in the Forgotten Temple behind the knocked down by the upheaval statue of Goddess Hylia. Not only did he need to investigate the sightings of Princess Zelda, deal with the source of the suffering of the allied tribes, follow Ravi to investigate statues and mines in the depths, but now also locate Zelda's tears and figure out if the master's sword was still around. It was a lot, but Link knew that the key lay in Raru's arm to enter his and Sonya's shrines of light to unite with Taba's son, Tulin, who had the abilities that his father could only dream of. Together, Link and Tulin conquered the Wind Temple, shot down Kolgara, and put an end to winter in Rito Village. Tulin became the new Sage of Wind and claimed one of the secret stones. The hero then set off to knock some sense into marbled rock roast boss Yunobo, brought him down into the depths of the Fire Temple. There they crushed the marbled Goma. Yunobo then accepted to become the Sage of Fire, and after granting Link his vow, returned to manage Yunoboko, with no more marbled rock roast on the menu. Zoro's domain, on the other hand, was plagued by sludge from above, plus sludge-like, which had knocked out King Dorafan and left the monster to Link and Sidon to defeat, which they did upon which Link opened the path from the ancient Zora waterworks to the water temple in the low gravity section of the sky. Mukturuk made a stand, but was washed away. Sidon became the Sage of Water after claiming the Water Stone and was crowned as King and Yona, Queen, after the abdication of his father. Riju was in a deep mess as Gibdus had taken over the desert. Link arrived just in time to repel their attack and then head to the Gerudo chief to the pyramid scheme that was the Lightning Temple. Luckily, Link and Riju came out on top. Riju was no longer just a chief, but also a sage, granting her, just like in Tulin, Yunobo, and King Sidon's cases, one of the secret stones, and handing Link an avatar, possessing her power in his rings. The hero had done it, but almost shed a tear himself after witnessing Princess Zelda's sacrifice and the final tear dropped by her. The time to locate the Master's Sword had arrived, and it was clear that the Zelda who kept showing up and then disappearing across the land was an imposter or disguised Yiga foot soldiers. Link made his way down to the depths where he defeated Master Koga and his vehicles. He then navigated from here to Korok Forest as the path above had been cursed, but by whom? The true incarnation from hell, Gloom Hands, and behind them, Phantom Ganon. Link dealt with them. The Great Deku Tree then pointed Link to the Master Sword, or he already pulled the blade after locating the final Dragon Tear. It turned out that the Blade of Evil's Bane was planted in the golden locks of Zelda's Light Dragon. She had taken care of it all along, and Link 
had been beaten enough shrines of light to pull it. Link barely made his way back from the Great Sky Island when gloom covered the sky over Hyrule Castle and Lookout Landing, leading to a goose chase after the princess who kept throwing monsters at Link. She even had the audacity to restore the sanctum to its prime before Ganondorf finally dropped the Zelda charade and tried once again with Phantom Ganon. Nope. And despite threats following the Sage's arrival, he was only delaying what was coming for him. Still, one Sage was missing in the lineup. But where? After some help from Paya and Taro and Kakariko, the path led to Faron, prior to reaching Dragonhead. From here, Minoru called Link, and with the head of the construct, directed him to Faron's depths and the Construct Factory. Link assembled Minero's spirit, a new body, and used it to crush the one she intended to use, but which got corrupted. The last Zonai informed Link about her and Zelda's lengthy mission, which was almost at its end. Now, the two had only to locate Ganondorf the hero was back to where the Zonai thread started. One skydive and team up with the sages later against the army of the Demon King, and then the hour of destiny struck. There, he was the shell of what was, but once again became Ganondorf in front of the hero's eyes. The king, who wanted to rule all with an iron fist, but never got to. Link pulled the Shining and restored Master's Sword and prepared for his hardest fight. Ganondorf, however, enjoyed the sensation of dueling once again, transforming into the Demon King. What he wasn't up in the sky about was the arrival of Link's friends and Minru's construct. He got rid of them as this was a personal matter between him, Link, and what was left of Raru. Too bad that our hero bested him with his fusions. The Demon King was at his end, but refused to accept defeat. He swallowed the stolen Zonai stone, turned into the Demon Dragon, and caught Link between his teeth. There in the sky, the Demon Dragon was hit by the Light Dragon. Link pulled the Master Sword one final time to finish what Zelda and Raru couldn't in the distant past. Step by step, the hero made his way to the Crown and Stolen Tear and planted the Master Sword, unleashing an explosion like Hyrule had never seen before. But what about Zelda? The spirits of King Raru and Queen Sonya came with the answer. They combined the last of their powers through Link and restored Zelda and Link's original arm. Link had his right arm back, but Princess Zelda was plummeting to the surface. This time her knight, hero, and love skydived after her until he achieved what he couldn't in the depths, caught her hand, and held close as they hit the lake below. Zelda, surprised that she was back to her true self, could finally thank her partner for life of getting rid of all of Hyrule's suffering, the Demon King Ganondorf. Link found Zelda, and the time had come for Minoru's spirit to depart from the Great Sky Island and join her brother and Queen Sonia, all while the remaining new sages swore their lifelong support to the next monarch of Hyrule, 
Queen Zelda and King Link? The perfect end to our 20 Zelda games timeline stretching from Skyward Sword to Tears of the King. What the future of Zelda will bring is uncertain, as we might wait for the 21st game until the series turns 40 in 2026. Sadly, that one will not have a new recording of our narrator Jason Dameron, who retired this year before May 12th. As a result, Jared Raimond was brought in to do Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom justice. We hope you enjoyed this combination and the complete timeline, so be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell as we're going for no less than 5000 likes this time. A big thanks goes to you for watching until the end and to all our patreon.com slash around patrons and in particular raw producer Charles Shash for making the Zelda timeline with Tears of the Kingdom possible. You rock! And please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.